Let's start this video out by removing the, the crud and the crap along here where our, where our uh, foam rubber surround will be glued to. And the best thing I've found over the years when you're cleaning this thing is to first scrape it with a knife. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use my pocket knife. This stuff will come off fairly easy. And then you kind of, you know, make sure the speaker is down, you know, at the bottom. You don't want to be scraping this thing with the speaker facing upward because a lot of the dust and crap will get down in here where the voice coil is. You don't want that, okay? What you want to do is kind of have it down like this so when you scrape it with your knife, all the stuff falls out on the towel as you go. And again, you take your time. This is just the first uh, crud removal procedure. Then we go over it with sandpaper until it's nice and shiny. And you don't use real fine sandpaper. You get down there with some gritty stuff and get it out. You're not going to sand through this metal. Not with a little small piece of hand sanding uh, done by a small piece of uh, uh, you know, emery cloth or something like that. Don't be afraid. This is rust and crap. Get it off there. Scrape it on down. Do the best you can. Then you turn your speaker around. And then you do it again. Just keep at it until that stuff all disappears. I'm kind of lucky here in a way. The stuff's coming off real easy. Now that we have most of the stuff off of there, you know, the crud, now we can get down to the actual rust. Now this thing not only has rust along there, it also has rust up in this area up in here. So all we have to do is take our time. Take our time, okay? Get yourself a medium grit emery paper, something like this. I don't know if it says it on the back what it is, 80 grit emery. And then go ahead and, and just... You know, take it easy. I, you know, I could remove this whole speaker, but I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm afraid I'll break something that can't be repaired. Remember, this thing's almost 90 years old. It's not like I can just go out and buy the pieces and parts I need. And I don't feel like manufacturing them because I did something stupid. You know, it doesn't make sense. So what we're going to do is we're taking this right here, and I'm going to break down all the rust that's on top much as I can get down you know I'm not going to go down into the metal real deep just till about nice and smooth you can feel it with your fingers nice and smooth then I'll take and up in this area here I'm also taking you know the emery paper with my finger as a buffer between this bigger cone so I don't be messing that up and I'm just going to knock off all that rust as far back as I can get it using the emery it's not that far back shouldn't be too much of a trouble but it's going to take a while to get it done. And once we get it all done, then we'll go ahead and take some navel jelly and put down here, see if we can't get rid of some of this uh, pitted rust. Just lay it down in there with a Q-tip, nice and easy like, and then wipe it out with a damp cloth later. It's a long process, but so what? I've got plenty of time. Well, so far, so good. I got most of the, uh, most of the rust off there and all of the glue that was holding it. Now for the, uh, the navel jelly. Today we're going to try to put the surround around our roll of speaker. It's not going to be easy. Well, I guess it will be easy, but it's just going to be time consuming and tedious and we have to make sure we do it right. Now, in an earlier video involving this uh, speaker, I told you that the surround is 10 and a half inches in diameter on the outside and nine or uh, <clears throat> let me see yeah ten and a half on the outside and eight on the inside the problem is our basket is nine and a half to the outside and seven and a half on the cone which is you know that means something's got to be done with this foam and according to the instructions here you can take a pair of scissors and trim it very very lightly around the edge to where it fits down in the basket real nice like so. I didn't particularly care for that idea. Fortunately on the back of the instructions is a, another section called tips and tricks and they said if your surround is larger than the diameter of your basket what you can do is take a pair of scissors and you can cut across the foam like so and then place it down in you know the lip of the basket all the way around to where the foam overlaps and then trim the foam down till you have a quarter of an inch overlap and then glue it like that wait for it, for it to dry and then go ahead and place it back on here and begin to cement it to the cone itself now this cone has really been uh, doing good as far as rubbing goes it's uh, almost disappeared just just a slight rub 
it's there, but I'm going to have to, uh, it just wants to be, there we go, see, it? not too bad, okay? Pretty quiet when it, once it gets down below where it's supposed to be, but hopefully once I get it cemented to the cone, I'm going to, it says to wait an hour. I think what I'm going to do is get it cemented on there and let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow, I'll be able to pull the uh, surround this way and that way and this way, whatever it takes to get this, to get this uh, thing quiet. See, it's fairly quiet right now. There is a rub. If I don't, get, if I don't hold it in the right spot, if there is a rub. I may never get the rub out. I don't know. There, see, it's fairly quiet. I'm going to have to really play with it. So let's get this uh, foam cut right now and get it overlapped and glued. She's been cut and then I overlapped it and I took this pencil and I marked the foam. Now if it turns out that it's a quarter inch or less of an overlap, I can just go ahead and glue it. If not, I'll have to trim the underside or the top side a little bit more to get it no more than a quarter of an inch overlap. So let's take that off and find out. Oh yeah, that is quite a bit. I'm going to have to cut it probably about down like that and then do my overlap. All right, that looks good. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this out of the way and take our glue. This is really good glue, by the way. It's especially designed for foam surrounds, it says. And I've used it before, and I'm telling you, it really is good. You only need to put the glue on one side. Make sure it's well covered, though. Let me get the top on this stuff again. You don't use hardly any of the glue. I've got plenty left over from the last time I, uh, I did this. Now what I'm going to do is kind of smooth that around with my finger a little bit and then stick it down. She fits great right now. Nice and right down in there the way it's supposed to, all the way around. Real nice. Now what we have to do now, now originally this speaker was only glued with this little time, looks like about an eighth of an inch. Well, we're going to do a little bit more than that. We really don't have much of a choice because the, the way this surround is designed, put it the right way, that would help. We got quite a bit of overlap now, which is what I was hoping for. You know, when we glue this baby down, she'll be down quite a ways. At least a, at least a width of this right here, which is a little bit more than an eighth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip this baby over and apply this glue to this part of the speaker all the way around. I'm going to put it on pretty heavy. I mean of, the, of the, <clears throat> this part of the speaker surround, I guess I should say. The cone surround. We're going to apply it to that part right there. All the way around. Then we're going to kind of smooth it out with our finger. Then we're going to turn it over here like this once the glue is on. It'll take both hands, of course. Then we're going to press this down underneath there. This is a little bit of warped part of the speaker. And we're going to go ahead and reach up from underneath. Uh, underneath your speaker, you'll find holes under there. See those holes down there where you can stick your fingers up through? You can stick your finger up through uh, all the way around. I've got this thing sitting in a box where it's sitting up higher. But I can stick my finger all the way through the hole under there and then use my thumb to press down on it and work my way all the way around here all the way around <clears throat> now it takes a little while for the glue to dry uh, I, I don't mean half an hour 45 minutes or anything like that it takes a couple of minutes so put your glue on kind of wet it around or move it around with your finger along this edge this inside edge and then give it a couple seconds. You can feel when it starts to get tacky, and then flip it over and start doing your sticking down. Now, that's the way I did it last time. But keep in mind, if, the, if this thing is muffed up, I have a second one, a plan B, that I can start all over again. So let's see what happens here. All right, the glue is on. And we're now going to flip it over and lay it up in there, and hopefully this will work. It's going to take two hands. I'll be back. Well, that's the best I could do on that. Uh, a little bit of the glue got out from underneath the uh, 
the edge of the surround onto the speaker. Don't worry about it. A little bit of glue is probably going to ease. It squoze out depending on, you know, my hand's not the steadiest in the world, so I probably put a little bit too much glue right here and right here, and it squoze out a little bit, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's no problem. One thing I did, uh, by the way, on the newer speakers, that, that glue is almost like rubber cement. It'll roll off. A little bit difficult on this one for some reason. I discovered something, though, uh, when I... When I was messing around with the speaker, you know, testing it to see if it would rub real much, I uh, discovered that if I pulled on this side here a little bit, it would quiet down. So I went ahead and put a spot of glue down in there to hold it in place, and let's see what happens. Look at that. Quiet. Just like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark this spot right here with an X. And we're going to let it set all night so I'll know where that spot was. And then all I'm going to have to do tomorrow is put a lift. You know, it's just a matter of lifting, lifting up the lip and putting a blob, just a, just a line, a bead of glue all the way around it. Just like that. Underneath, the, underneath this foam. Good, healthy, you know, you don't have to smear a ton of it. Just a nice bead all the way around. And then press it down with your hands. And as you press it down, you have to constantly be checking to make sure there's no rub on the speaker. That's good, huh? And then uh, once you get it where it's supposed to be, everything's quiet. The glue will dry, and then you'll test the speaker again, and it'll be rubbing again. <laughs> That's always the way it is, but it'll be too late then. <laughs> so be prepared for that. And uh, tomorrow morning, I will finish this thing up as far as the surround goes. It is the next day, and we're getting ready now to cement down our surround. Now, normally with a you know a new modern type speaker, you go ahead and put your take your old glue, you know, and then you just kind of glue it all the way around underneath this lip, of course, not on top, underneath it. You just kind of you know lift it up a little bit like so, and put your glue all the way around a bead, and then press down slowly. Unfortunately, I can't do that. There was so much uh, voice coil rub here that right now we don't have any. Just, just barely. See it right there? Not anywhere near what it was. So what I'm going to have to do is if I were to just like put a bead all the way around it and then start sticking it down, it would rub for sure. And you know, the use of shims doesn't help me either. I know there's some people out there saying, well, use shims, use shims. Well, you can use shims sometimes, but not always, because if I put those shims in there and then wind up gluing it all the way around and pull the shims out there's no guarantee it won't rub i have to feel my way around this thing uh you know just right here is where we left off yesterday that's what's left of our little x that i put there because that part is glued i may take it around to about right here with glue and then hold it down with my fingers and you know until she dries real good and then feel the cone okay see it's very quiet down there and then after that's glued, and I know that we don't have a lot of sound, a lot of rubbing sound here, then I'll go a little bit further around here. It's a patience thing. Take your time. I may have to pull the speaker this way, or I may have to pull it this way. I don't know. Or this way. You never know to keep that rub from happening. I've got to feel my way around and do the best I can. And when you're done, you know, there's no guarantee it's not going to rub. But we're going to do our very best to keep that from happening. So just a little at a time, maybe three, four inches. And then another three, four inches. And then another three, four inches. Hopefully it'll work. All right, the first few inches have dried and they're glued down and uh, seems to be fairly quiet. Still a little rub, but when I get over here and I pull this thing uh, slightly that in that direction, I think it'll quiet down a lot. See there? There may be a tiny bit of rub when we're done, but if I can minimize it, I'll be happy. See, that'll be real nice when I pull it over that way. Now let's do the next three or four inches. All right, we're about halfway around. Still pretty quiet. Very slight rub. All right, let's keep going. I had to take the scissors and trim this off a little bit. It was overlapping and I wanted to have more room to pull it this way when I glue it. I'll be able to hold it and pull it over this way a little bit. And uh, 
because it, it's it's still rubbing just enough to annoy me but I hope I can get it glued and pulled over enough so maybe it won't just a little bit of rub there but we may have to live with that you know 90 year old speaker what can I say well the surround is in it's all nice and uh, glued down and everything it looks pretty good not the best job in the world but you know I had a warped speaker right over here the cone is a little warped right there it kind of comes in and uh, unfortunately <clears throat> I found out that this speaker is a little bit weaker than I gave it credit for I was you know going like this up in this area it seems pretty tough but down around the center when I was taking just just taking these two fingers and just the ball of my fingers and just kind of pressing the, uh, the cone up and down to see how much drag I was getting on the uh, voice coil and I could feel my fingers here and over here begin to sink through the the cone yeah just what I needed well I went ahead and patched them they're nice and solid now but we still have a little bit of drag can you hear it we're gonna have to live with it unfortunately I think what we've got here is the cardboard tube is probably warped down inside there I took a piece of paper and ran it all the way around it didn't help much I got around to about this point right here and I couldn't get it won't go past this one point so the warp is right in this area down here where it's dragging against the metal post anyway that's the best we can do on that uh, the next time you see this we'll go ahead and put those uh, felt pads those met those flat metal bars and the felt pads on and uh, that should just to be about it I as far as the speaker goes and then we'll start uh, putting this thing back together we've got to put the bridge rectifier in got to put a, uh, a terminal strip in and we'll look at the rest of the parts that make up this entire speaker minus the cabinet we'll do that last anyway until next time this is John